Well, hello, hello again. And uh, in this series that I have been recording, it's really giving you as a taxpayer breakdown to understand exactly what are the big changes going on between Trump tax credits and deductions versus our new president biden um and i'm trying to make this as simple as possible again as i had mentioned in my other um episodes i know sometimes taxes could be kind of complicated and trust me it can be <laughs> especially every time we have a new president changes are well pretty much common um, and what ha happened with Biden is that as a Democrat president, he's trying to uh, give a few more breaks uh, for people who are in the medium class to the lower class uh, versus to the high earners, uh, what, what we call the wealthy, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, portion. Um, but this episode, I do want to kind of just um, dive in. And let's talk about the differences about retirement savings, right? So if you have a 401k, a 403, uh, you know, an IRA, how is that going to change? And it is going to change a lot, by the way. Remember, again, these are proposals. Things could change by the time, you know, you listen to uh, this episode. If it hasn't, you're more welcome to always come back and listen to the playlist that I'm going to be creating, which is a series, like I say, of what big changes have happened between these two presidents. Um, and I think the most important thing is staying abreast of what's going on. Um, I always believe as a taxpayer, we have a responsibility not only paying taxes because I do have to pay my portion too. I don't get no exception or any special tax deduction because I'm a tax professional. I have to pay the same taxes you do right? Um, difference is, yes, I understand the loopholes. Um, and that's why I'm there for you, to help you to reduce your taxes, pay less taxes, keep more money in your pocket. And that's what I do. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Liz Soria. I am a tax advisor and an accountant. Been doing this for over 16 years, helping a lot of individuals and small business owners keep more of their hard earned money in their pocket and really use that money to invest in other things that is going to produce more income, right? Would that make sense, right? So let's go ahead and get started here. So the big changes that I see between retirement savings account right now is what's called the contributions, okay? Um, if you may recall, uh, originally the contributions were limited to $6,000 or seven thousand dollars once you reach the age of fifty plus years. So it's called a catch up. Um, so uh, you had that extra thousand dollars that you can add uh, to your um, retirement savings automatically just once you turn fifty, right? <laughs> so other than that, um, that was a good thing. Now we also know that there's a lot of penalties, right, um, that have to do when you withdraw any type of funds um, from a retirement account, especially if you're under the age of 59 and a half, okay? Uh, now, I always tell people that one of the, my, my best advice is to people who are in age between 60 and 65, that's like the golden zone, I call it. And the reason for that is because you're starting to be able to draw money in case you needed to make other investments without getting hit with the penalty of 10%, which is the most common penalty that they charge you with. Now, most IRA contributions are fully deductible, traditional. Let's talk about traditional versus Roth, right? And the traditional is that as long as you're earning in your single up to 65 or you're married up to 104,000, okay? Um, you're able to do that full contribution. Now, there's something really big that's going to happen with a big change with Biden. Biden is saying, hey, wait a minute. I think that the high earners have been taking advantage of putting so much money for their retirement, but yet the average Joe and Jane out there is not able to do it, right? And the reason for that is that he's proposing, you know what, I want to be able to equalize, equalize the tax treat, the tax treatment in contribution to our savings accounts. What does that mean, Liz? Well, very simple. It means that uh, let me give you an example, and I'm going to share my screen here. 
but especially even if you just listen to my podcast, which I do have a separate one. Um, and like I said, if so far you have got some value out of this, please, you know, thumbs up, like my, uh, you know, my, my, my video on my podcast and, uh, definitely, you know, subscribe. And, uh, if you feel this is, you know, information that can really truly help you and share, share with your family and friends, because sometimes I think getting the right source of information is very important. I know that across, I hear a lot of other, um, YouTubers and also podcasts, they really don't have the background. They don't, they just read an article and then start reading about it. And they just jump into the trend because uh, they, they want to get the spotlight, <laughs> but they really, that's not their background. I always say that I stick to my guns and that means I know about tax law or know about accounting. And those are, has been my niche. Uh, I don't try to become a, a doctor and discuss things about health. Or I don't try to become an attorney and discuss legal stuff that it's really not, you know, I'm not entitled to. But anyhow, you know, now with the, the free speech and everyone creating information out there, um, they think they're, you know, they, they don't need to have a strong background to discuss very, really profound topics that I think should be left for really more people like me that have years of experience and also have a you know um, enough skills because we have learned throughout right and I'm still learning by the way uh, a lot to 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 learn in this uh, field that I have chosen right so but anyhow um, so just be careful that's that's my end you know um, message is be careful who you listen to who who you watch uh, make sure that they do have a background in that field. Uh, not that they're just, you know, making up stuff or because they read an article and now they become an expert. <laughs> but anyhow, other than that, here's the big change that I want to make a comparable, uh, that way you can understand how big this is going to be between Biden and, and really Trump. So here's the thing. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for an example, we have two taxpayers. Taxpayer A Let's call him, I don't know, John. And John is making an average of $60,000 a year. Now, John is able to take in a traditional 401k or, you know, an RA. They're able to take what's called a pre-tax dump, right? Why do we do traditional? Well, because it cuts down our tax income, right? So we get to take more uh, home as a net paycheck, right? Now, what happens with that? If, if let's say, like you said, for an example, John makes $60,000, but John has, maybe he's in the tax bracket, okay, of 20 and a half percent, okay? Now remember, you can be in a tax bracket all the way from 10% all the way to 37%, which is the maximum tax bracket, okay? That means your federal income tax, right? What Uncle Sam is deducting every single time you get your paycheck, all right? Now, if John is doing 60000 and he's in the 20.5% tax bracket, that means that for that out of every $1,000, okay, that he's doing a contribution into his retirement plan, $205 is a tax deduction. So let me, let me repeat that. $205 is a tax deduction for every $1,000 pre-tax contribution he does into his retirement plan, okay? But I want you to listen to this part really carefully. And this is where I think that the high earners always benefit way, way more than the low, earner, the low earners. And here's the thing. Let's say that instead of John making 60, let's say that he makes $600,000. That's right, $600,000. Now here's the difference. Now, now he's paying 37%. Remember what I mentioned earlier? That's the highest bracket right now. But like I said, watch my playlist because I've been doing different segments about this series, breaking down all the changes that's been proposed because that might go up again to 39.6, by the way, with Biden, okay? But let's keep it at 30 sim as it is right now. Now, if John will be making instead of $6,600,000, that means that he's actually will receive $370 deductible, okay, for every 1,000 contribution. Get it? So now he's making 10 times more 
of his income. And yes, he's getting taxed more money, but he's also getting more benefit because now instead of just $205 for every $1,000 that he's putting in, that he's actually getting, okay, he's actually now gonna get $370. Listen to the big difference. So what actually Biden is proposing is what's called to create an equalized contribution, meaning that, hey, yes, you pay more taxes, but you shouldn't have to be entitled to get more money out of that retirement either, okay? So what's happening is that we want to do up to 26% maximum, okay? So going back to the other uh, uh, slide here that I have, so pretty much what's, what Biden is saying, hey, let's go ahead and equalize the tax, tax treatment defined as a savings account. And what we're gonna do is create that balance that maybe up to 26, 28% is the maximum that people would be able to take, no matter how high your income is. So there's not gonna be a differential of saying, oh, because you make more money, yeah, you pay more taxes, but you also are getting more money, you know, uh, contribution to your retirement that the average Joe and Jane is not getting. Okay, so there's a big difference there. So he said, hey, let's, let's pretty much neutralize that gap between the high earner and the medium high earner. So if that happens, that's gonna be really beneficial because then that means that you know, the high earners are not going to be able to actually put an average of 26% maximum, okay? So in other words, Biden proposal seeks to equalize the treatment by eliminating, that's exactly what he's trying to do, eliminate the tax deductible traditional contribution, okay? Entirely instead of all individual, regardless of the income. Okay, so that will mean that it will be entitled to a refundable tax credit estimated up to 26% maximum for each dollar contribution that you make to a plan. Again, if you're a high earner, yes, you pay more taxes, but you're also getting more benefit because you put in more money into your retirement. And like I said, there's a big difference between you making 60,000 income and only able to get $205 as a deductible against your income, that if you're making $600,000, you're able to take $370 for that same $1,000 that you put in, get it? So this is really important. I think this is gonna be a huge change and it's gonna benefit that way, uh, you know, the people who are in the top are not taking advantage of this. And that's exactly what's happening right now, okay? now. Really brief, I don't want to touch too much into the subject, but estate taxes, obviously it's 40% right now. Um, there is an exclusion of $10 million per taxpayer. Uh, Biden is proposing to drop that to $3.5 million, all right? And yes, it will be indexed with inflation per year, okay? Um, he also has talked about returning the estate tax from 40% to 45%. It's gonna increase that. And there's gonna be probably a change also what they call the step up basis applies to inherent assets. Um, so if he does repeal the step up basis of, at death, then that means that people are not gonna be able to take advantage of not having to pay that capital gain. So in other words, what does that mean? A lot of people, uh, you could have a property and then you can actually, um, you know, provide your um, next kin or probably your family members uh, where there's a step up, meaning that if a home you purchase for $100,000 and 20 years later, let's say that home is worth, I don't know, $100,000 more or $75,000 more, there's going to be a difference, right? So at the death of your family member who you're, you know, you're actually acquiring that property from, uh, what's going to happen through a trust or, you know, whatever might be a living trust or whatever might be the estate that you have, then you will have to pay a difference between the purchase price of your family member versus to the time that they decease. 
Um, so that's very important that we have that law because it's called step up basis. You won't have to pay taxes and capital gains. In other words, in that difference because it will be step up, meaning that you will able to obtain that property, that real estate property, without having tax consequences, okay? Um, but he is planning to repeal some of that. So again, we have to stay up to date with what's gonna happen. Another thing that I do wanna kind of briefly touch and base here, and it's gonna be a separate episode I'm gonna do, and it has to do with um, purchasing uh, uh, actually, um, you know, if it, um, appliances, if the tax credits are coming back, that's great for especially a lot of people moving right now. Uh, you know, interests are extremely low in the United States. Um, and a lot of times when we buy a property, right, what happens? Appliances are old, uh, especially air conditionings, right? And things like that that we need improvement. So we're gonna be talking about that in the next episode. And also I'm gonna be mentioning about housing uh, cost. That's right. If you're rental, guess what? You might start getting a credit. That's going to be awesome. Uh, we're also going to be talking about if you have to do repairs in your home, you might be able to get credit for that. Yes, you don't have to be an investor. You can be just a regular taxpayer. Uh, we know that real estate investors are the ones that get most of the benefits, but this, I'm talking about what Biden is trying to do is to create it for regular people like you. That's right. To get these kind of benefits, we're going to be talking about a little bit about the healthcare costs, right? And also about, you know, um, any type of adjustments that have to be done when you're doing a disability expense, okay? So in, uh, in higher education expenses, this is big, big news, um, especially I like it for a lot of people who have huge student loans right now, and uh, they really need all the help that they can get. I think this, um, you know, revision will be very beneficial for all of you. So anyhow, uh, once again, please like, share, and comment, and uh, I will be seeing you in, in the next episode. And like I said, stay abreast and make smart decisions, okay? Remember, tax laws are there for a reason for you to take advantage of them, but you must know the law. Uh, when we make mistakes, uh, it's also very costly. So please try to avoid it. Say, reach out to people that understand the law. They can really help you. Um, because again, every time we have a change with the president, you always want to make sure that things are getting done correctly. And especially if you're doing yourself approach where you're doing it online, your own taxes. Make sure that at least you get some consultation with an advisor. Okay. One well, y'all. Thank you so much, and I will be seeing you in the next episode. Take care. This is Liz Sorry. Bye-bye.